Hello, and welcome to Westside Electronic Music Tutorials. This is going to be a very brief and basic tutorial on the Mac OS 10.10 .10 Yosemite. Anyone who has used a Mac before will find that this operating system is very similar to that that you used in the past. If you're coming over from the Windows side, no need for trepidation. What you'll find is that the Mac OS is nicely organized to maximize your creative workflow and also allow you to personalize that workflow. Uh, let's start off with some terminology. Up here at the top we have pull down menus. The area here, your whole screen, is the desktop. The little pointer, which will also assume different forms depending on the application you're in, is called the curse mouse cursor. And then over here we have any number of icons. And icons can represent volumes, which are hard drives. They could represent folders, which are collections of things. They can represent, actually, files. And uh, I could double click on that file to open it, if I chose to do that. And they also represent aliases, which are things that are elsewhere on the computer. We'll find when we look in the applications folder, they can uh, additionally represent applications. Uh, as we look around the desktop here down at the bottom, the most stunning feature is what's called the dock. And what the dock is, is a customizable list of aliases that we can use uh, for applications uh, that, and folders that we access regularly. Uh, the dock will also show us what applications are running. Right now I'm in the OS, which is called the Finder app. And down here is the icon in the dock for the Finder app. And we'll notice with the little dot below it that's running. If you have multiple applications running, and in this case I do, at any time you can hold down and we'll learn our first Mac OS shortcut, Command Tab, and it will give us a list of the applications that are running, and by subsequently hitting Tab, I can scroll through to open those applications, uh, or to make those applications active that are already opened. If I hold Tab, it will scroll through those quickly. And so we are currently in the Finder, and so I'm going to return there to the Finder and uh, and now we're ready to continue. Let's look at some. First shortcut we're going to want to learn is Command N. And what Command N does is it opens a new Finder window. Now I should mention with any of these commands I could do what we call going fishing, which is go up here to the pull down menu and I could find new Finder window Command N. But any of these uh, sort of functions or tasks that we want to do uh, uh, repeatedly, we always want to learn the shortcut in order to make our workflow as efficient as possible. So we're going to go Command N, and that's going to make a Finder window. And as I continue to do Command N, it would make multiple windows. Now any of these windows, I can close them by hitting the red button. I can maximize them by hitting the green button. also put them down in the dock by hitting the yellow button. Uh, anytime you want to close a window in the operating system, the shortcut for that is Command W for close. So I can close uh, uh, Command W and continue to close those. What you'll also learn as a shortcut is if I go Command N now and make several, is that whereas Command W will close, if I hold down Option and Command W, kind of like a peace sign there, and then hit W for close. It will uh, apply that close to all of the windows. Uh, let's go back to that Finder window command in. Uh, when we look at the Finder window, what we'll find with any of the windows, we can move them around by grabbing the gray bar at the top. We can expand the window by grabbing down here at the bottom corner. And in this window, there's a sidebar. And that sidebar has a number of aliases, once again, that take us to places, locations on the computer that we might want to go to regularly, like the Applications folder, for example, or your Documents folder. And again, those are aliases uh, uh, that take us to specific locations. Now, when we're here, and I'm going to use Applications to demonstrate this, we can look at this in a number of different forms. These little buttons here across the top will show us all those different views. The first view is icon view. And here, once again, as promised, all those apps are uh, being presented as icons. 
This is very handy when we want to select things. We can select single things by clicking. We can select multiple things by holding down shift and clicking. Or we can skip around by holding down command and click, clicking. We can always also click and drag to select an icon view. For, so for those drag and drop type out uh, um, operations, icon view is great. The second view is list view. And if we look at list view here, anyone from the window side will feel all warm and fuzzy inside because this looks very much like Windows. The view that we're going to generally ask for to use when working uh, in media art is column view. And what column view does is it allows us to uh, see the precise location of where we're working. So for example, if I look in the Audacity folder here, and there's the, uh, the icon for the Audacity application, what I will find is that I can back out of this that we've got the Audacity application in the Audacity folder that's in the Applications folder. Uh, makes it very easy to find uh, and, and uh, delineate what our precise location is. Uh, we can also use this last view, and I'll show you that. It's very similar to what an iPhone or iTunes would look like. Uh, I usually discourage people from using that particular view. Um, let's talk about some of these pull-down menus up at the top. Let's close this window. Let's go. Anytime that we're working in an application across the top, we're going to get these pull-down menus that allow us to do a number of functions. And some of them are pretty generic, things like file, view, help, window. We see those in many apps. But you'll also notice particular um, pull-down menus that relate to the specific app you're working on. So for example, if we're working in uh, Pro Avid Pro Tools, for example, there might be a track menu uh, up there. Um, whatever application you have running, it will always uh, be shown here in bold. So in here we have the Finder. We can see that's running. And uh, typically that's where I can go to quit uh, uh, an app. Uh, in the case of the Finder, what we're going to find there with the Finder menu, this is where we can empty the trash. And right now if I looked at something in the trash and I can empty that, the window comes up. You'll notice there's a blue button there, which is the uh, operation that I actually ask it to do. Anytime you have a blue button, instead of clicking on it, you can just hit enter or return and it will do the operation and you'll notice now that the trash is emptied. Uh, we can also look up here uh, and find preferences uh, for that particular application. An additional pull down menu that's always showing is this Apple menu. And let's look at a number of different things here in the Apple menu. First, anytime I want to shut down, restart, log out, or in, since we're going to be working in media arts, inevitably at some point uh, you will crash an application. We can force quick quit that here in the Apple menu. Uh, I can also find go to this about the, this Mac and open that up, and we're going to do that. And this tells me all the information about my computer. This is particularly helpful when we're trying to install uh, media software and we need to know uh, about compatibility issues. Uh, and again, I can close that window at any time by Command W. Probably the most important thing in the Apple menu is the system preferences. And we can use the system preferences uh, to customize the machine and make it work the way that we want it to work. Let's look at a few system preferences here. Uh, we've got, for example, on the desktop, I could go here to choose the desktop picture. And right now I have this beautiful picture of, uh, of Yosemite in Snowfall. Uh, as a media artist, I tend to like to uh, um, just use something boring like a solid color. And so I'm going to switch that there. You can always go back here. Other preferences that we might want to look at under mouse. This is set up like an old Mac Apple mouse right now where I only have one click. I'm going to take the right side and make that a secondary button. And so I, now what I have uh, when I'm choosing icons is my single click to select things, my double click to open things, that's the left click, or I can use my right click at any time to bring up a contextual menu depending on what I happen to be trying to work on on the computer. And that right click 
is a, is a very efficient way uh, uh, to do our business uh, here on the computer. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to the preferences again. And then let's talk about the dock. And you'll notice that there's um, a system preference here for the dock. I'm going to click on that. And notice my dock down here. I could change the size of it. Do a Wayne's World unnecessary zoom there. I can also change the magnification. Some people like to do the small size and the large magnification so you get this very pleasing thing when you pull across there. That's a very pleasing look and feel. I can also change the location of the dock. You put it, a lot of media artists will put it up here on the left side because very oftentimes music apps and whatnot have play buttons and things down there uh, on the bottom. Uh, I can also hide the dock to maximize my workspace and I'm going to actually unhide that and bring it back. And then I'm going to return it to the bottom. And that's a little bit of this. Now as I, what I'm able to do, use the dock for as I mentioned is to uh, uh, create aliases for folders and applications that I often use. I can remove things from the dock at any time by clicking and dragging and releasing them. And now that's no longer on the dock. Now I didn't delete the PowerPoint application. It is still in the applications folder, but I took away that alias to where I can open it quickly. Uh, I can also put things on the dock and let's talk about that. I'm going to bring up a new finder window and I'm going to go to the applications folder and I'm going to look at that in column view. And anytime I want to get to the applications folder, I can always command A to get there. Uh, I can place things on the dock, and in this case, I'm going to take an application. It's GarageBand application here. And I could click on that and place it down in the dock so I don't have to go looking for it uh, the next time I want to open GarageBand. Now let's talk about where those apps actually are. If I double click on the hard drive icon, there's a users folder. There's also an applications folder where we just were. There's a users folder. If I double click on that users folder, then notice there's a folder here for everyone who's used this computer and my home folder will look like a little house and there it is right there. If I open my home folder by double clicking, what I'll find is the desktop and if I open that desktop you'll notice it's the same things are on the desktop here. I have a documents folder and you'll notice I have quite a few things in there. I also have a music folder. Anytime you're trying to back up your computer if you're on the hard drive and you go to your users folder and you just copy that folder you're going to have all of your files that pretty much that you've put on that computer. And this is where you're actually working. Now what a lot of people like to do is to have folders like their documents folder and here's an alias down here, same place here, a downloads folder, anything that they access often, like for example if I want to always access the music folder, I can always place the alias down here. I could also place it here in the sidebar like that. And so I, I removed it and replaced it. So th there's any number of places we can put aliases to maximize our workflow. Uh, just one more shortcut I want to share before we call it a day here on the Mac OS is uh, making new folders. And whereas making a folder was command N, shift command N, uh, sorry, making a, a, let me back up there and be safe here, making a uh, new finder window was command N. If I add shift and go shift command in, that will make a new folder. So shift command in, and there's a new folder. We'll notice it's blue, ready for typing. I can put any number of things in there. I can always select it by clicking. I can also copy anything on the computer by holding down option and dragging. And that comes in very handy. And as I say, I can either place this if I want to trash it in the trash, or if I want to do something to this folder, I can right click and it gives me any number of things I can do, making aliases, getting information, uh, 
You notice if I get information on this folder, it gives me nothing. If you get information on the hard drive, for example, there's a lot of stuff on that hard drive. This one is, uh, well, looks like it's just slightly over uh, a third of the way full. You can also get information anytime in the OS by clicking on something and just sort of coming in. Well, that's our basic intro to the OS. Uh, in a subsequent tutorial, we'll look at specifically at shortcuts that we can use. Hopefully, this has been informative. Thank you for using Westside Electronic Music Tutorial.